All right, so I was on PCGamer.com. I saw this uh, article, why 2021 was the worst year for PC gaming. It was published a couple days ago. I'm a little bit behind. But uh, budget PC gaming is what marks the platform apart from the rest. And 2021 killed it dead. It's a little bit of doom posting. because Basically, the entire thing is complaining about the chip shortage. If you don't know that, I mean, I'm sure you do if you're watching this, but the GPUs and also the materials used to make graphics cards and just, I mean, a lot of things, not just that, but they're in very short supply right now, high demand, so prices have gone up. That's basically the crux of the article here. He's talking about the fact that there hasn't been any, like, budget-friendly GPUs have come out. And, I mean, it's, it's literally, that's all he talks about for the most part. And he gives some examples, and he talks about why... You know, you would go with the Series X or the PS5 if you want PC gaming at $500. That's still where the smart money goes. If you could find any of those. But basically, it's the, the, the main problem I have with this article is that it's just, it's all doom and gloom. You know, it's like, man, why not try to focus more on the positive stuff? I mean, I, I, this isn't like clickbaity on, on this guy's part. Um, oops. Dave James. It's not like clickbaity because, I mean, it's the truth. It's just... You're, you're focusing too much on, like, the negatives instead of the positives. There have been a lot of, you know, good games that have come out. Not as many of the AAA games, though, to be honest, because, like, the pandemic has kind of slowed that kind of stuff down. But, for instance, you know, like, I, I, I play Warframe. I really like that game. It's it's one of my uh, favorite games. Because I just, I really get into the whole, like, you know, okay, get a new weapon, grind it up. Get a new weapon, grind it, that kind of stuff. You know, but... You know, it's, it's kind of MMO-ish on my behalf, but kind of not. It's, anyway, it's complicated. I won't get into it. But anyway, just because it's not worth getting into, you know. But he's, he's talking about, you know, you could sell $1,000 GPUs as your $400 options. Why would you dip any lower than the potential performances stack? So normally we'd have seen sub-$200 cards for budget gamers by now. Because then he talks about the traditional understanding as you make a lot of the $200 GPUs aiming to sell a whole load of them because you'll sell fewer of the high-priced options. But in this, the darkest possible timeline, there's no financial imperative to waste, quote-unquote, production capacity on cheaper products when you can make the same number of more expensive chips and still sell the same number with a far higher return. And, and that's right. I mean, it's, it's accurate. You know, the fact that it's economically understandable doesn't make any less saddening or maddening. Capitalism, she has a harsh mistress. And it's like, okay, you know. Then he talks about how uh, NVIDIA had released five sub-$300 GPUs a year or so after the 2080 launched. You know, each a step up over the relevant forebears. You could make that six if you counted the price drop to 299 for the 2060 at the beginning of 2020. On the AMD side, partly due to a lower flagship price, it had released seven of its own sub-$300 GPUs in the year after it released the 5700 XT. If you count the various OEM versions of its first-gen RDNA cards, that is. You know, and where does the number stand a year or so after the launch of the 3080 and the 6800 XT? At a big fat zero, not a zilch. There are no sub-300 GPUs in this generation because of the chip shortage. And again, he's, he's right. He's accurate on this. But instead of focusing on, like, you know, there's, there's some games. There's some really good games that have been coming out and stuff. It depends. I'm not going to name any because it depends on the person. Because, like, to some people, you know, you'd be like, oh, well, hey, this game is really cool. And other people would be like, fuck that piece of shit. You know, it, so it just depends. But anyway, you know, he says, there may yet be new NVIDIA and AMD GPUs launched in the coming year with lower price tags and actual availability, and Intel will finally be joining the race with its own range of discrete GPUs as well. That will give us three chances at affordable competitive graphics cards, and with SSD prices going down, DDR4 being well priced right now, and Intel's budget CPUs being outstanding value, there is very much the potential for a budget gaming rena uh, renaissance in 2022. No, okay. I mean, you know, it's it depends. Now, you know, the CES rolling around in January, because again, this was a few days ago. Traditionally, where AMD likes to talk about mobile chips and new APUs. There's rumors of a Rembrandt APU design sporting our RDNA 2 GPU cores. You know, okay, I mean, it talks about the Steam Deck has been delayed from a December launch to February with Valve citing global launch chain issues. And it's like, yeah, you know, I mean, maybe it's just me. I prefer to kind of look at more at the, on, the, on the positive side. Because, like, life sucks enough, <laughs> you know, as it is, without just sitting here just dwelling in the negative. I try not to just dwell on the negative too much, but, you know, whatever. 
it, it's, it's been, anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap this up here because I'm starting to ramble now. I really don't want to, but, you know, says, there's faint hope for a return of a budget gaming PC market. Yeah, I hope so. I mean, you know, I definitely hope so, of course. But, you know, we'll see. I mean, it'll happen eventually. It's just a matter of time. But it's just, we'll see. Anyway, I'll go ahead and wrap this up here. I thank you very much for watching, and have a good one.